After watching episode 6 of The Faraway Paladin, I can truly say the character writing and how characters respond and interact with situations and moments, it's truly unlike anything I've experienced in anime before. And it's not to say I haven't experienced good character writing before. There's just certain ways things happen, but the idea of how genuine and non-plot point oriented everything is, from Will recognizing that he almost just apologized in a situation that one, reminded him of his own life, and two, he's hungry and doesn't want to just keep eating bread and water, so he ends up getting part of the boar in a situation that could have ended up in bloodshed for one of them. And even if Will could have killed him, that's not exactly who he wants to be. The idea of a once pretty friendly village to you, well, when demons overrun yours, you're not going to risk going to them for help and asking for help. Instead, you're going to do whatever it takes to try to protect your friends and family. And when it comes to kind of like afterwards and, you know, the wandering priest warrior who saved you, you have the ability because you know they're going to protect you if anything should happen, so you can question them, and as much as you sympathize with what happened, you can't just let them go in risk of this happening again. But the idea of money makes the world go round, I mean, at that point, if you're having protection and you're having payment, as much as you feel like you're robbing the good guy here, it's hard not to go along with it, and if you can overturn that village, there's a potential peace to be made there. The way everything transpired and the way Will responded and interacted with this episode, I thought this was going to be like a wandering episode, like he would be lonely, he would miss people, maybe he'd talk with the Goddess of Light, but I wasn't expecting really to meet up with anyone, and when we did, I didn't naturally assume this elf was going to go raid a village, I thought there was like some dark secret with his village, like maybe he was keeping like the bodies of his family like around and was acting like they were alive. I've seen so many stories do things like that, so my natural assumption was if you don't want him coming back with you, either A, you don't have enough food to supply him with and you are worried about him stealing, or you got some demons in your own closet. And as soon as I saw the village and saw what they looked like, I could tell right then and there that they were about to get raided after having the vision in his head. And I just love the escalation and the calm before the storm within this episode, because you can't look at how Will is responding to this and say, oh, he reminds me of blank. I really don't think that's fair because Will reminds me of William G. Maryblood, right? That's who he is as a character. His mother, his father, his grandfather shaped him into a very unique but very refreshing person. I really think the boar sequence will go underrated and I don't think it should. Because the idea of him continuing to recognize his past life, it's now something that's really first and foremost in the anime. And the simple ideas of when someone's upset and he naturally would apologize, that ain't gonna cut it in this world, nor is that how he wants to be in this world in a second chance. So when you finally have something that looks rather tasty, you know, you can't just apologize because then he can take advantage and take the whole thing. And it's kind of a, it's one of the things where I think you could argue who totally was in the right for the boar and not one who already had an arrow, one who finished. But really at that point, splitting it is without a doubt the most human thing to do. And hell, you even get a tasty meal with the liver as that stuff will spoil right then and there. And the idea of just kind of like traveling briefly, I knew I wanted to see more of these two's interactions because... You know, the idea of a pretty nice guy and someone who's a little blunt and in your face is just naturally a recipe for success in character interactions. And as soon as they parted, I knew something had to bring them back together. And I kind of did just buy into the vision of him being attacked because until we saw what the village looked like, I wasn't under the impression they were the ones doing the writing or attacking. And it's really cool to see how the magic is continuing to work because he very much was careful in keeping it hidden that he can use incarnations without saying anything and whatnot. But when it came to the battle, I mean, the speed, the, like, the idea of just going full blood, if you have enough muscle mass, you can do anything with just physical force alone. Blood is smiling from beyond the grave. I am telling you right now about that, like, just line. And the idea of him really just kicking ass and taking names, like, you really get a sense that the way he's overcoming hurdles, it's not something that feels OP protagonist, but a lot of years of training from all three of his guardians and shaping him into a pretty powerful force. Like the fact that they kicked this episode off and were fighting pretty dangerous looking opponents, but given what he just experienced with an undead god and everything like that, 
this is kind of like a cakewalk for him. So while the elves and everyone like that are saying, like, just going to attack the village that was overtaken, you know, it's not something that they could do. William himself probably can, especially if he has a pretty trained and skillful archer kind of backing him from a distance, right? And I just love that. I love seeing how he's careful. And even I think one of my favorite like little moments is when there's a moment where he's like making all these different spells and kind of like warding off bad things. There's like, uh, you know, monsters, humans, things like that. But then he also has one for insects. And I think the reason he did that is so like an insect wouldn't accidentally trip off the alarm or something like that. It was just really cool to see the little bells and whistles that they do. Like even when I was thinking about it, I was like, I know he probably has some food that he took with him. But what exactly is he eating? And the idea that he's basically relying on he can purify water and he can pray for bread, but that's not really the, you know, the nutritious meal that a wandering priest should have, especially if he's going to be kicking ass and taking some names. But I really like how no one in this episode felt convenient. The idea of the anger from the general villagers wanting to string him up and kill them, the kind of like nicer, older kind of like mentor of the village wanting to hear him out, but also recognizing that feelings can't be in the way here, because even if you said, hey, come live with us, can you really assume, and would you want to believe that they won't try to kill you in the sleep so that you would have all the food for yourself? What if their food wares start to, you know, get a little slim? Do you really want them next to you? But when money's involved and a powerful priest is involved, it kind of just makes the situation that very much should have been cliche, and I don't really say that as an insult, that there's just certain things that shouldn't be, I think, groundbreaking for writing quality, but when they are, it's hard not to gush about them like you're a kid on Christmas morning. I mean, I knew Faraway Paladin was going to be interesting and refreshing, I just wasn't expecting that the first episode post, you know, kind of graduation day, so to speak, would be this memorable. Like, I'd go as far to say, you know, obviously the emotional high points are always going to be, like, the things that stick out the most. The passing scene last week, I think, is my favorite episode. But this one comes damn close as a second favorite for me. I'm very excited to see how the action will continue to evolve. I mean, you definitely can look at the Faraway Paladin and say it's not the flashiest anime of this season, but the, every bit of action or, like, intense sequence of this episode, I think they really get across what Will's doing and the magnitude of what Will's doing. And I think that's what makes it so good. And, I mean, there's no way the author still isn't grinning ear to ear. But I mean, just look at the Twitter interactions. They say it is itself. Like, incredible episode. I am grinning ear to ear myself, but let me know your thoughts and feelings. Like, what did you think of the character interactions, the way the author and the studio portrayed such a generic situation into something so original in quality, or did you feel the complete opposite? Let me know down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.